Hey guys, this week we're gonna be talking about the neurology of pain. What happens when pain occurs? And you know what I'd like to do is uh, I'm gonna demonstrate how pain starts. I've got this nail over here and what I thought I would do is to just hammer it into my hand and then we'll talk about the neurology of what happens when I hammer it in. So here we go. Hurts. Oh, man. Okay. I'm pulling that out of there. I'm Dr. Steve. And I'm Dr. Tim. And we're, we're the outsiders. We are so glad to see you guys. We're going to get our timing down on that, right? I'm Dr. Steve. <laughs> and I'm Dr. Tim. And we're the Ouch Doctors. We're doctors. We're going to get that down one of these days. Guys, what a pleasure to be here with you today. As I said, we're going to be talking to you today about the neurology of pain. We're going to work our way up to chronic pain, but I want to start by talking to you about how our nervous system functions in regard to pain. How does that sound, Dr. Tim? That sounds fantastic. And before we go there, we are doctors. We are the Ouch Doctors, but we're not your doctor. We're here to, to share some awesome information for you and uh, maybe put some questions in your mind to take back to your fantastic providers, your physical therapist, your chiropractor, your medical doctor, your psychologist, and ask them questions about the connection between stress and chronic pain. Knowledge is so very important. And by the way, guys, if you happen to be watching us on YouTube, that little red that little red button in the back right, bottom right-hand corner, that's to subscribe to the channel. This way you get to find out about all of our upcoming programs and about our various uh, classes. Uh, go ahead and join that. Become part of our tribe. We'd love to have you be part of that. All right, Dr. Steve, lay some knowledge on us, buddy. Let's do that, guys. So we're going to talk about the uh, physiology of pain perception, and uh, we're going to get right into that. Here we go. So got you guys right there, and boom. All righty, folks. So that moment when you saw me hammer that nail into my hand, the first thing that happened was that the moment that the noxious stimulus took place, the moment that an injury happens, the moment that something occurs in your life that perhaps uh, you fall and you trip, you turn your ankle, whatever it happens to be, the tissues adjacent to the area that you damage will be immediately begin to release certain neurochemicals, prostaglandins, uh, cytokinins that stimulate the nerves in that area. And of course, our body has got nerves everywhere. There's a neural net everywhere in our bodies. There's not a place in your body that doesn't have nerve endings immediately adjacent to it. And so those nerve endings are picking up the irritation from those chemicals that are released by the damaged tissue. And what they do is they send a signal along the nerve back to your spinal cord. And when they get to your spinal cord, they enter into the back part of your spinal cord, what's called the dorsal side of the spinal cord. And that nerve ending, the other end of that nerve, meets up with another nerve right there in an area of the back part of the spinal cord called the substantia gelatinosa. At that moment, the other nerve takes that signal, takes it across to the other side of the spinal cord. So if you've hurt your right hand, it's going to go across to your left side. And it's going to go into an area called the spinal thalamic tract. That is an area alongside of the center of your spinal cord that goes up and down. And that nerve root's going to go, that second nerve is going to send the signal all the way up your spine, all the way to the thalamus, which is what we call the relay station. It's a part of your brain, very, very much deep into the cortex of your brain in the midbrain area. Quiz on this, Dr. Steve? What's that? You're going to be a quiz on this. Is there going to be a quiz on this? Well, you never know, so pay close attention. <laughs> so you can see here from this diagram that the uh, red line is what's called the ascending tract. And the ascending, let's get that out of there too. The ascending tract sends the nerve signal all the way up into the thalamus where it meets another nerve, and that nerve takes that signal all the way to the cortex, to what's called the somatosensory cortex, outer part of your brain, and it turns out that the outer part of your brain uh, from the center on back has areas that are associated with every single part of your body. So that depending upon where the signal took place, the hand, the nose, the face, wherever, that signal will find its way to the, to the associated part of your brain. And that's how your brain knows 
that that's the area where the stimulus took place. Now, if you look at the number, the uh, the names alongside of this diagram, you see transduction, transmission, modulation, perception, interpretation, and behavior. Transduction is what happens when the signal first is created at the point where the sense where the sensation occurred, where the injury perhaps occurred. Transmission is a transmission of the nerve impulse all the way up to the brain. Modulation is a technique that your brain uses to help to subtly change the degree or intensity of that pain. We could talk more about that later. And then perception happens at the cerebral cortex. In other words, everything that happened up until now was not perception. You didn't feel the pain in your hand, in your hand. You didn't feel it in your spinal cord. You only felt it when it reached your brain. That's where pain, pain perception takes place. The first time that, you're, that you know that you've done something or that you've been stimulated in any way is when the signal finds its way all the way from the area of your body across to the other side of your body, all the way up the spinal cord and to the opposite side of your brain. And then suddenly your brain is able to say something happened in that hand. And it knows because it's the right side of the brain that got the signal that something happened to the left hand. You still don't know what it is because the next step is interpretation. The next step is that when that signal reaches the cerebral cortex, the somatosensory cortex, now that signal is going to get to the frontal cortex and it's got to get to the parietal cortex where your brain says, what was that? Was it anything like I've had before? Is it something I need to be concerned about? What's going on here? And at that moment, you either feel pain or pleasure or whatever else, whatever other sensation occurs. The important I'm thing no pleasure there. So, I'm sorry? I'm thinking no pleasure after you just whacked a nail into your hand. Probably not. The point here is that until we reach the point of interpretation, you don't know what exactly happened. And so that nerve has to have sent a signal all the way up to your brain. That signal has to reach the cerebral cortex. That point on the cerebral cortex has to then be compared with other points along the cerebral cortex. And finally, you interpret that as pain or whatever other sensation you're experiencing. Why is this so important to us? Well, first of all, as Tim and I like to say, pain happens in the brain, not in the body. That's a really important point. And number two, what you experience as pain is only experienced as pain based on the interpretation that your brain gives to that stimulus. It's not automatically pain. Your body has got to have the signal, your brain has got to receive the signal, and then your brain has got to decide what to do with that signal before you can decide that this is or is not pain. And how long does it take for that to happen, Steve? Milliseconds, just milliseconds. The whole process from the time that you hit that hammer on your hand, as you know, you're pretty much aware of it. You think the moment it happens, but all the things we just talked about, the signal being transduced, being transmitted, being sent up into the brain, and then being interpreted by the brain is all happening in a fraction of a second. So that in that fraction of a second, you've already decided what that pain is and how severe that pain is. Now, why is this so important for us to talk about, Dr. Tim? Well, I think you're still, you have you, did, what about the behavior there at the end? You got to interpretation. What about behavior? Well, behavior is when you pull away, is when you scream, is when you, oh, yeah. um, you know, and, and even the very experience of pain itself is considered a behavior. So the, 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 the cringe, those are all parts of the behavior that occur. So this yep. is the entire cycle of pain, but the thing we need to understand, and here we're only talking about acute pain, the pain that happens in an instant. Right. Chronic pain, however, has slightly different pathway to it. And, uh, okay. and first of all, you know what, what? The first thing that comes into my mind with this is, is how incredible is our body? I mean, mm -hmm. we take it for granted, but all this stuff that happens in a millisecond, and this is just one small part of the nervous system doing one thing. I'm just blown away by how that we're even alive, you know, <laughs> with all this stuff going on. Uh, it's incredible. And you know what also I'm reminded of before I go into the chronic pain just a little bit is I can't remember the name of the disease, Dr. Steve, but it's the disease that um, where people are born without the ability to feel pain. Mm. Do you remember what the name is of that? I don't. I don't. But anyway, people routinely do not live past the mid-20s with that disease 
They're born without the ability to feel pain. So if they put their hand on a uh, a hot stove, they wouldn't even feel that it would. Uh, they wouldn't take their hand away at all because that mechanism is not there. And these people pass away very very early in life because pain is necessary because it protects us. It keeps us safe. Oh, we need that. But the problem is with people with chronic pain and persistent pain is that it's starting to it started to morph. And even after the initial the uh, insult, maybe it's a car accident or a fall down the stairs or you know a running injury or something like that. Even in some people, even after that condition is long healed, they still feel pain. And it can even be worse and worse and worse. And that's and the result of that is, is because that has become stress, what is stimulated parts of the brain that uh, that put us in fight or flight, put us in, in uh, oh my God, and in, 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 in the sympathetic nervous system and tension and stress and, and fear. And then that affects our blood supply, it affects nerve supply, it affects uh, chemical balance in our body. And then it's a vicious cycle and that creates more grooves for pain to be felt. Uh, and then it just becomes a more of a chronic problem. And it's a, it's a vicious cycle, which keeps going around in circles. But that is, there's, all, that sounds like all bad news. There's good news with that because the more we retrain pain in, it's possible to retrain that out and get out of that, that vicious cycle. And that's what Dr. Steve and I are really here about is helping people so, to retrain that, get out of it. Let me, let me just jump in here and tell you that Nancy Caligari Fuller was kind enough to give us the name congenital analgesia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank Nancy. you. <laughs> for sharing that. Now, going back to our pain diagram where we said that pain is transmitted from a peripheral area of the body all the way up to the brain where the brain not only perceives it, but then has to interpret it and decide what to do with it. All happening within a split second, the, the input into how we experience pain, the degree to which we experience pain, even in acute pain, is to some extent under our control. Because you see, there are many different parts of our brain that are contributing to whether or not we're going to call that thing pain, right? So uh, let me let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, I do hypnosis shows, and at one time, I did a show for a very large group, uh, a school group, and there were there were uh, about 1,500 people in bleachers sitting uh, in a gymnasium, and the people I'd hypnotized hypnotized were on the floor, on in chairs facing the audience, and I was putting them into a state of hypnosis. And as I was quietly bringing them into that state of hypnosis. There was a janitor pushing a, a cart of metal folding chairs across the floor of the gym. And right in the middle of the quiet, peaceful part of my presentation, where I was gradually putting people into a very quiet, peaceful state, the cart fell over and about 150 metal folding chairs suddenly hit the floor of the gym and made this explosive noise. Now, of course, at that point, I could have gotten really frustrated and said, I can't believe you ruined my show. But instead, I said, and as you hear the sound of the chairs hitting the ground, you go deeper into relaxation. And they did. And what that, shows, what that shows us is that there is a moment, it's a split second, but there's a moment when a stimulus occurs. Our brain perceives the stimulus. And between the perception and the interpretation, we have an in. We have the capacity to change the interpretation of that pain. And you, you have the capacity to change the interpretation of a pain signal so that you do not experience it as pain. This is fascinating. Now, why is this so important? Because what's gonna happen is that as long as you continue to contribute negative energy to the pain signal, as long as you continue to allow yourself to interpret pain as a noxious, as a negative, as an unwanted experience and you bring aversion to it, you're continuing to build, as Dr. Tim talked about, new neural nets, neural neural networks, the brain that wires to get fires together, wires together, meaning that if you constantly have the same set of thoughts and the same set of behaviors and the same interpretations of a noxious stimulus in your body, what that's going to do is to create a pathway within your nervous system, inside of your brain, that's going to become self-fulfilling. Self-fulfilling, meaning it's going to fire off on its own, and you're going to start to notice 
that pains will last longer and longer and longer, and they'll become more and more serious. And then you start to leave the area that we call uh, no, uh, nociceptive pain, nociceptive meaning from the nociceptors or the pain receptors in your skin, to what's called neuropathic pain, which is pain created by the nerves themselves. The nerves are so used to creating the interpretation of pain that they'll do it even without any stimulation whatsoever. And that's when you've got chronic pain, Dr. Tim. Right, and that is not groovy. That's not groovy. Dr. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> being groovy and uh because yeah we, we etch the pain into ourselves and it becomes more chronic almost like we etch grooves into a into a record on a record player kind of thing and so the good news about that is that we can redo that we can etch new grooves into it we can etch the old pain away uh and that is what is really a fascinating thing but uh yeah, it, it, it should leave people with a, a good sense of hope that may not have felt hope before because there's not a lot of hope in taking stronger and stronger pain medication or maybe contemplating a surgery, thinking that's going to be the end-all, be-all, uh, or unending doctor and physical therapy visits and things like that and not getting too much. Uh, but if you can do it yourself and re-etch and get groovy with, with your own pathways, and retrain the pathways, then how cool is that uh, uh, to do it yourself, to heal yourself, to fix it yourself? Uh, now, and that's what Dr. Steve and I are. We're, we're, we're going to get people on board. We're going to give examples of that in, in future shows. For right now, what we really want you to take away from today's uh, conversation is that your nervous system has a very predictable pathway for pain, but once it gets to your brain, there are a lot of contributing factors. They're not just the stimulus itself. They're your thought processes. They're the uh, the pathways that have already been built in the past, the pre what we might call pre-existing conditions. All of those things have a contribution to your pain, and all of those things, all of those elements in your brain can be rewired. You do have what Tim and I like to call neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the nervous system to rewire itself. Again, nerves that fire together, wire together. And so over the course of the next several days and weeks, we're going to begin to show you how you can rewire your brain if those neural networks have been built over time. But more importantly, how can you start using the pain that you experience, even acute pain, to rewire yourself from the very get-go? right? So that you don't automatically interpret it as a negative, but that you could start to experience the possibility that, uh, yes, I need, as Tim said, you need pain. We need pain. But how much pain do we need? And how long do we need to have the pain for? This is a perfect segue, Dr. Steve, into the one big thing. Do you yeah. have a one big thing for us? Yeah. So for today, we want to leave you with an exercise, uh, recognizing that we as in our default methods, we'll always default to what we call aversion. Oh, I don't like this feeling. And when you default to aversion, what you're doing is you're giving up your control over the interpretation of the stimulus. You had the noxious uh, impulse, it went across your spinal cord, it went up to your thalamus, it went from your thalamus up to your somatosensory cortex. And now from there, you've got perception. And now to interpret it, hmm, what? how significant, how important is this? That's where aversion comes in. If we've grown up believing that every sensation that's out of the ordinary, every sensation that's intense is pain, but not just pain, this is killing me, this is terrible. Well, then what we're doing is we're becoming victims. We're giving up our control over how we experience pain. So here's what I want you to do this week. I want to give you one noxious stimulus. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to nail, uh, uh, put a nail in your in your uh, hand. I didn't really do that, by the way. <laughs> I should have made that disclaimer from the very beginning. Uh, but here's a good one. Take a bowl, big bowl, fill it with cold water. Take a couple of trays of ice and put them into the cold water and stick your hand into that ice water. Time yourself. See how long you can keep your hand in that ice water before it starts to feel painful to you. And then take your hand out and notice how long that took. Now what I want you to do is I want you to warm your hand up, leave the bowl of ice water right there, 
And then you're going to do the same experiment. But before you do the experiment this time, I want you to say to yourself, I experience cold with equanimity, with peace, with acceptance. It's okay. As a matter of fact, when I put my hand in cold water, it just helps to energize me and make me feel better. And it gives me, gives me a feeling of positivity. And then you put your hand in that cold water. And while it's in there, you talk to yourself about how it's giving you more energy and making you feel better and making you a better person. And just think of all kinds of positive outcomes from putting your hand in that cold water. They don't have to be true. They only have to be accepted by your brain in that moment. And so you just talk yourself into how this is an awesome experience and just do that and notice how much less pain you experience and notice how much longer your hand stays in that water because of the change that you made, because the interpretation that you put on the stimulus rather than letting the stimulus determine its own interpretation. And that's how your life begins to become free of chronic pain. That's super cool. And I can't wait to do this myself. That's it. And I'm, I'm traditionally like the world's biggest wimp uh, in <laughs> cold water. Like there's many summers, I live 10 minutes from the beach and there's many summers where I don't even jump in the ocean because I'm such a wimp. Now, with that said, cold air, I know I can dress for. I've been to the top of the world. I've been to the top of Mount Everest. I was the first chiropractor and the first from the state of Rhode Island to climb to the top of Mount Everest. But put me in water, and I'm the world's biggest wimp. So, Dr. Steve, I cannot wait to do this experiment myself. Can't wait to hear the results, and I can't wait to hear all of your results if you're all courageous enough to give it a shot, but I can promise you that experimenting with things that we call averse experiences or noxious stimuli that are safe will give you a lot of power and a lot of uh, awareness of the power that you do have. So this is a great place for us to start. I'm going to encourage you guys over the next 24 hours until we meet again to play with that. The cold is a good one. You might think of another one, but make sure it's one that's not, like I'm not gonna recommend that you put your hand in fire to see how long you leave it there. <laughs> We're suggesting you. do something that's not actually damaging to you, but that creates the experience of pain and see if you can talk yourself into experiencing it differently because that's the seed from which is going to grow the tree of power that you're gonna have to overcome your chronic pain. And I like I, that, analogy. that our friend Laurie Ann here, so she's going to try it. And I honor you for being willing to accept the challenge, Laurie Ann. We love and appreciate you. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dr. Dr. Steve, tell us what's on tap for tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at some of the uh, techniques and ideas that we've we've explored all week long. We're going to talk about the um, the concepts of the reason we have pain, the purpose of pain, do we need to have pain, uh, what we do to start our day with less pain, and then we're going to give you guys at least one solid um, uh, process, like the way we did for the starting your day, something you can do in the middle of the day that will help you to overcome and strengthen your resolve against pain. And it's a very simple process. And when you get to uh, try that tomorrow, you're going to find that once again, you gain that much more mastery over your experience of pain. So tune in. It's going to be awesome. Right. And I'm going to uh, just share maybe my top five to do things uh, so we can make just boom, 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 top five to do's. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to add that to that. And uh, yeah, so I can't wait for that. Let's see you tomorrow. and. Uh, Remember, retrain your brain, lose your pain. Love it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.